It's unbelievable to be here. After all that I've been through, to be able to finally make it to Michigan, put on that jersey, really is a dream come true. For 20-year-old Austin Hatch, Chrysler Center at the University of Michigan has been a yearned for destination. Not a finish line, a kind of promised land, reached only after a journey of biblical proportions. Third flight level 220. Now we're on. A plane just crashed. And all of a sudden, big boom. Eight years later. Oh my gosh, it is unbelievable. When you're millimeters away from death, you look at life through a different lens. He is a walking miracle. Let's just say that the situation didn't look good. But here we are. Hatch on the right side. Gave up the dribble, had it knocked loose, and a foul called. Although we'll give Austin Hatch a chance to go to the free throw line. Bends the knees and on its way, and it's good. Yes, it is. A moment for Austin Hatch. John line gives him a big hug. What he's gone through so far is miraculous. He said to me, Coach, the way I look, I've been so blessed through life. Uh, I've only had two really bad days in my life. Around 6 p.m. on September 1st, 2003, an eight-year-old Austin boarded a Beechcraft six-seater for a flight from the family cabin in Michigan to their home in Fort Wayne, Indiana. On board were Austin's mother, Julie, his five-year-old brother, Ian, and 11-year-old sister, Lindsay. At the controls, his father, Dr. Stephen Hatch. I was sitting shotgun with my father when some equipment failure took place. It just seemed to me that some of the lights on some of the screens went out. At his father's instruction, Austin says, he checked the instrument panel with a flashlight. The engine was no longer working. The plane struck a utility pole and crashed just after 8 p.m. in Uniondale, Indiana. Fire swept through the passenger compartment. Dr. Hatch would suffer severe burns. He threw Austin out of the plane and he tried to get the others out, and that is the, uh, the, where the burns came from. So. He saved Austin's life. He did. What happened after that? Um, I don't, I don't really don't want to get into that. Um. Austin's mother, his sister, and his brother would not survive. My father and I would often go to the go to the gravesite. He would just hug me and tell me how much he loved me and how thankful he was to still have me. And I would say the exact same thing. I mean, he told me, Austin, you know, I mean, we're, we're just going to press on. I and mean, that's, that's what we're called to do. The National Transportation Safety Board would attribute the accident to pilot error. Dr. Hatch would dispute that finding. He returned to work and to flying planes, as he had since 1997. Now, there was just Austin and his father and the game they both loved. The best therapy we had was just being together. We spent long hours in the driveway. He would always, always make time um, to play me in one-on-one. -on -one. And let me tell you, nothing felt better. The trash talk that would go back and forth between us, I mean, it was, it was ridiculous. Soon, there would be a new source of love and support. In 2004, Dr. Hatch met Kimberly Neal, single mother of three, Brittany, Maria, and an Austin of her own. A romance blossomed. I just remember seeing this picture she would put by her bedside, and I just kept asking her who these guys were, and she said, you'll know soon, you'll know soon. In May 2005, Austin was in the wedding party as Stephen and Kim were married. The mother-son bond is important, and I had lost that for some time. 
and um, she, she, she came, in, came into my life and reestablished that. She actually adopted me, and I call her mom. Within this blended family, his new older sisters brought Austin into their hearts. We got to spend some time together, and he shared with me about his life prior to us, and ever since then, very close. He was, like, so sweet to want to even be my brother. The fact that his heart was big enough to accept us says a lot about him. By early 2011, Austin was a six-foot-six standout sophomore at Canterbury High, already thinking about playing at the next level. One university stood out in his mind, the one his father cheered for, the one his late mother, Julie, had graduated from. From an early age, I was taught to bleed maize and blue. The Michigan bond my mom and I shared, as well as the bond that, you know, between me and my other family members was strong. One night in February of 2011, Coach Beeline looked on as Austin went for 30 points and 16 rebounds. I knew I was going to offer him a scholarship the moment I walked out of that gym. He called me at about 1.45 in the afternoon on June 15th, and you know, I said, I'd love, love to have you. He says, uh, can I accept right now? And I said, are you sure? You want to sleep on this? No, I want to go to Michigan. I just knew this was a dream for him to play here. There was a party at a local restaurant that night to celebrate. You know, the beeline offense is, uh, you know, he kind of values the, the big shooter mm -hmm. kind of guy, and uh, I think I could fill in that offense pretty well for him. You know, I've got a decent shooter, and uh, i got some size, so I think that'll help. We were all celebrating and being so loud that Dad bought everybody's dessert as an apology. There was a part where it was almost like he was a little kid, excited about it. One of the proudest moments of his life of me. He knew what it took to get there and how much work and how much time I had to put in to make that dream a reality. Nine days later, on June 24, 2011, Dr. Hatch decided to fly with his wife Kim and Austin to their Michigan cabin. The plane left Fort Wayne at 5.30 p.m. Bad weather forced Dr. Hatch to divert to an airport in Charlevoix, Michigan. At 7.20, he was cleared to land. 911? Yeah, we just had an aircraft crash just north of the airfield. It should be on the street just north of the airfield. It's just to the left of, um, oh my God. Okay, was it coming into the airport or going he was out? trying to come in, but he was coming in the wrong way. Breaking news out of Charlevoix County. You're looking at the aftermath of a plane crash. Two people inside killed on impact. Another passenger in the back of the plane suffered serious injuries. We're not sure on the condition of that person. I started walking and pacing the room, screaming, there's no way this happened again. There's no way this happened again. I just remember feeling, how is my whole family gone? All the time that we put into making our new family and how much I loved my dad. I knew I was never gonna get it back. And to think that my sweet, sweet parents were gone. And my next step was to get to Austin. I knew I had to get to Austin. Well, we heard he was in a coma, that he was severely injured to his brain, and that he might never wake up. And even if he did, that he might never walk again or might never talk again. The plane crash that killed Austin Hatch's parents had broken both of Austin's collarbones. He had rib fractures, holes in his lung, fractures of his sternum and his left hip, and a massive brain injury. I got there and immediately walked in and lost it. Fell to the floor, was screaming. It's just too hard to see him unconscious and wires left and right everywhere from toe to head, just not even knowing if he was gonna come out alive. For six weeks, 
Austin lay in a medically induced coma. By July, his condition had stabilized, but he remained largely unresponsive. He was in a wheelchair and he couldn't stand and his head was supported and couldn't control movements. I couldn't believe that he survived for this. You've got to be kidding me. When he was able to ask about his parents, Austin would receive the worst news imaginable. What was it like to realize that you'd lost your dad and your mom? Yeah, it's hard to, hard to put that into words. Losing a father who is not only your dad, but is also your best friend. And then going through a loss a second time, um, you know, I kind of thought to myself, you know, I mean, I, I, thought, I thought I already had my loss. Forgive me for asking this. Were you angry at your father? Never, ever, 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 never, ever. He was, as far as, far as I'm concerned, um, Steve Hatch, my father, was, um, was the man of the millennium. Steve Hatch's dream had been to see his son at Michigan on the team. It was Austin's goal, too. I had basketball in my future, and I realized how much work it was going to take for me to get there. Four. Yep. Within the first few weeks, he just kept improving. Oh, that's good. He said to me, you know I'm going to play basketball again. End of story. The last time that I saw him, you're watching a guy running and dunking and doing that. Now you watch a young man that has trouble putting one foot in front of the other. And uh, it, it can, it's very sobering, very sobering. For more than a year, he continued to rehab, back home in Fort Wayne with his sister Maria as his guardian. Then for his senior year, Austin moved to Los Angeles in 2013 to live with his uncle Mike, who brought him to Loyola High School and coached Jamal Adams. The whole goal really was to get away from, from the tragedy that he had survived and really put himself in his position to be as successful at Michigan as possible. To train Austin, Rashid Hazard, who'd rehabbed Kobe Bryant the year before, was brought in by Coach Adams with words he'd always recall. He literally asked me, do you want to be a part of a miracle? For Austin and I, everything was about doing things with the proper mechanics and executing them the same way every time. And if there was one subtle difference, we did it again. We spent a lot of mornings in the gym, 5, 5.30, 6 a.m., getting work in. He had this spirit about him that he could do anything, and he really believed it, and I believed it in him. For months, they worked. Austin had not played in a game in nearly three years. Then, on January 8th, 2014, Loyola got out to a big lead. I went down there and said, Austin, oh, it's an opportunity to get in. It's today today. And he was like, hell yeah, coach, it's time to go. And so, on his first shot, I'd envisioned that shot for a long time, since I got hurt, really. What did it feel like when that ball went through the net? Old times. People ask me all the time, like, you know, what are your expectations for him at Michigan? And, you know, till, till the day that we die, I'll never doubt anything with Austin Hatch. Austin James Hatch. Austin would graduate from Loyola in June and head for Ann Arbor, where his Michigan scholarship awaited him and a spot on the team. People keep thanking us or showing great appreciation for honoring this scholarship and doing all these things. I said, wait a minute, the, we're getting the blessing here. We're around a young man that is just incredible to be around. 
He is a walking miracle. He just went full force, go big or go home. Like Dad always said. Austin Hatch has reached his destination. Secure in the belief that he has never been alone, that his family will always sustain him. I love you. I love you too. Those he has lost remain alive in his heart, guiding his progress as Austin continues on the most remarkable of journeys. What do you think your parents would be proudest of? I'm sure they'd be proud of me just being here, but I think they would probably be more proud of my outlook on life. They're still with me every day, still having a profound impact on the man I am and hope to become.